Today we're talking about how to tell if an optional parameter has been passed in. This first case is the lucky case because we don't have to. In this case, x is either passed in or it gets the value 42. But it's not always possible to put the value of your default argument in the function definition up here. For instance, in this case, the default argument that we want is the length of an array. We can't know that length when we define the function, so we have to compute it dynamically. Another reason not to put a default value up here is if the default value is mutable like a dictionary. Default values are defined at the time that the function is defined, not when the function is called. So if you had a default mutable argument like a dictionary, then that dictionary would be shared amongst all calls to the function. Doing this is a very common source of bugs. So you might be tempted to do the following. Set the default value to none, and then use a Boolean expression to tell whether or not none was passed in. This isn't always wrong, but I do think it's a bad habit. What if zero or the empty dictionary were valid parameters? This code would throw out those parameters and replace them with the defaults. What I recommend doing is the following. Again, keep none as your default argument, and then set x to be either itself, if it's not none, or otherwise compute the default. This explicit check to see whether x is none allows us to pass in zero if we need to. You can also do it this way, explicitly checking if the parameter is none, and setting the default if it is. I prefer always using this explicit check against none because it's one less thing that I have to think about. I don't need to worry about whether zero or an empty object might be a valid parameter. However, there is one exceedingly rare case where this still isn't enough. What if I actually want to distinguish between the cases when a user passes in none versus when they don't pass in anything? If you are writing a function this way, I really encourage you to take a look at your function and think about it. Do you really need to distinguish those cases? Is there any way you can avoid it? Most of the time, I think you can avoid it, but especially for code that writes other code or highly generic code, sometimes it just can't be avoided. For those cases, we'll use something called a sentinel. A sentinel is an object whose sole purpose is to check whether or not something is or isn't the sentinel value. In many cases, it's okay to use the Python built-in none as a sentinel value. That's what we did in the previous example. But if we want to distinguish none, then we have to make our own sentinel. Once again, we just set the sentinel to be the default value, and then check explicitly using the is operator whether or not the passed-in argument is the sentinel. Now we can easily distinguish whether we have the sentinel value or none. Here we have two example uses of the sentinel pattern in the Python standard library. On the left, we see its use in the data classes library, and on the right, we see its use in the func tools library. However, the sentinel pattern will get you into trouble if you want to type check your code. You can see here that mypy is giving me an error correctly, telling me that missing isn't the right type. The way that the standard library gets around this is by using the overload decorator from the typing library. Get rid of the type annotations in your actual implementation of the function. Then, just before the implementation of the function, you need to write a separate overload for every possible combination of types that could be passed into the function. At runtime, this implementation is the only one that actually gets called, and so it must handle all the possible type combinations that could be passed in. The overload decorator's purpose is more to help static type checkers like MyPy. You can see now that the program passes MyPy's type check. That's all I have this time. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.